Hello friends, welcome to CEC online lectures. Uh, so we were learning about the recruitment and placement that takes place in the organization. Uh, and we have learned that the recruitment represents the first interaction that a company or an organization makes with the potential employees. And it is uh, through the recruitment process that many individuals they come to know about an organization, what business that organization is into, what is their uh, their culture like. And on the basis of these informations, they eventually decide uh, whether they wish to work for that organization or not. And a well-planned recruiting procedure results in high quality applicants, whereas a haphazard effort will result in only ordinary or uh, average applicants uh, joining uh, the organization. So high quality employees cannot be selected when they are unaware of the job openings or vacancies in the organization and they are not interested in working for the company. So obviously they will not apply for the uh, vacancy. So the recruiting teams, they must inform qualified individuals about the employment opportunities they must create a positive image and provide enough information uh, so that the applicants can make comparisons with their qualifications and interests and generate enthusiasm among the best candidates so that they can apply for vacant positions. So today we are going to learn about the consequences of an effective recruiting and an inefficient recruiting in the organization then we will also learn about the factors that affect recruitment so what all factors are there that will affect the recruitment procedure or recruitment process well there are two kinds of factors external factors external means external to the organization and internal factors the factors within the organization so uh, what are these factors we are going to uh, learn about it so let's get started friends Recruitment is a potential source of competitive advantage to a firm and an effective approach to recruitment can help a company successfully compete for best in class talent. The firm must choose a recruiting approach that produces the best pool of candidates quickly and cost effectively. So these two um, aspects are important as far as recruitment is concerned. One is that the speed with which we uh, recruit people and the cost that is involved. We all know that recruitment is a uh, cost um, is a costly affair. So the recruiting teams must try and minimize these costs. So an effective recruiting program thus helps an organization in attracting highly qualified and competent people. So that is the main focus of any recruiting uh, program or recruiting procedure to attract people who are competent, who are skilled and who are qualified for that particular job that you are advertising. So it also ensures that the selected candidates are retained for a longer duration. So it is not only important to uh, recruit qualified people uh, since the uh, process, as I already stated, is a costly affair. So what if the, uh, the uh, new hire joins and then leaves within months? Now that is going to cost an organization a lot. So the success of a recruiting program can be determined if that employee is retained for long duration. So the recruiting program therefore must ensure that apart from uh, joining the organization, uh, the new hire is retained uh, for a long duration. Uh, then a recruiting program makes sure that there is a perfect match between the cost and benefit. So the cost involved in recruiting people and the benefit of uh, those people benefit in terms of the performance and the productivity of uh, those people that you are hiring so there has to be a match between uh, the cost and the benefit so if uh, the benefits are uh, uh, lesser in compared to the cost then it means your recruiting program was a failure or was not as much effective so we must try that the costs should be less 
than the benefits. So this is simple economics. Uh, then another um, uh, effective uh, recruiting program must also uh, ensure uh, that there is a culturally diverse workforce. So research has uh, stated this uh, fact a number of times uh, that when the workforce is diverse, is culturally diverse, uh, the performance of uh, employees, it increases. Uh, because people coming from um, diverse cultures, they have their different mindsets and they bring in uh, certain creativity, uh, certain differences um, uh, that is uh, the way uh, things are being solved or things are looked at. So uh, when uh, culturally diverse people come together and work together, uh, they bring a new energy and uh, the, uh, the programs uh, or the projects they are uh, undertaking together, uh, they become a great success. So a recruiting program also must ensure that there is a culturally diverse workforce. Now let's also understand the outcomes of an ineffective recruiting program. So what if your recruiting program has been ineffective? So it will be a failure to generate an adequate number of qualified applicants. So if you are unable to acquire adequate number of applicants, qualified, skilled, competent applicants, then it means your recruiting program was ineffective. And it greatly complicates the selection process resulting in lowering of selection standards. So if we are not able to generate enough number of qualified people, uh, so uh, the organization will obviously have to, you know, lower their uh, benchmarks and lower their selection standards. And this is not a very healthy practice um, as far as recruiting and selecting of uh, people is concerned. That means you are compromising on the skills. You are compromising uh, on the competency of um, applicants. So this is not a healthy uh, thing for the organization. So the poor quality of selection means that you will have to incur or the organization will have to incur extra costs on the training and supervision of uh, the people who are hired because of the lower uh, selection standards. So when recruitment fails to meet organizational needs for skills, a typical response is to increase the entry level pay scales. This will alter the original salary structures, which is result, which results in some unavoidable consequences and will be an uh, additional burden uh, on the organization. So this is a uh, human psychology that when we uh, don't get uh, um, uh, the people of our choice, what we will do is that we will uh, increase the salary to lower them. So we are hiring the wrong people. We are hiring incompetent people at an increased pay scales. So this is again um, not very healthy and an ethical practice. So this is the failure of having an uh, effective uh, recruitment processes. So uh, let's come and learn about the factors that affect recruitment. So as I uh, stated in the beginning as well, that uh, there are two kinds of factors, uh, the external factors and the internal factors. So the external factors are the factors which are not, um, uh, which are not in control of the organization because uh, they are external to the organization. And internal factors are the ones that are controlled by the organization. So external factors are the demand and supply, unemployment rate, labor market conditions, labor laws, legal consideration, competitors, and the image of the organization. Uh, internal factors include the recruitment policy of the organization, the age of the organization, the HR planning, the size of the organization, and the cost involved. So let's learn about all these factors one by one. The demand and supply of specific skills in labor market. So if the demand for a particular skill is high relative to the supply, so there will be an unexpected recruiting effort that will be needed. So today, as we know that the demand for data analysts and artificial intelligence experts is high than their supply. 
so as compared to the demand and supply relationship for non technical employees so uh, since the demand of data analysts is high in comparison to supply we need to put in extra efforts uh, while recruiting but we can easily uh, get people uh, who have an engineering degree say so uh, the demand and uh, supply will affect the recruitment the second uh, external factor we uh, learn is of the unemployment rate so we know when the unemployment rate in a given area is high the company's recruitment process may be simpler and an increased size of labor uh, pool providing better opportunities for attracting qualified applicants can be there so on the other hand as the unemployment rate drops the recruiting efforts must be increased and new sources must be explored so the employment and unemployment rate also determines the recruitment uh, then the third uh, factor is the labor market conditions so labor market conditions in the local area uh, of primary importance is uh, in recruiting for most non managerial supervisory and middle management positions is there Uh, however so far as the recruitment for executive and top management positions is concerned the conditions of all india market are important uh, the next uh, factor is the labor laws so labor laws basically reflect the social and political environment of a market which are created by the central government and the state governments so both these governments they govern the labor laws so as the government ch changes Uh, so will the labor laws change so these laws govern the compensation the working environment the safety and health regulations for different types of employments so as i said as the government changes the laws at times also change but some of the laws um, uh, are permanent and they are uh, some uh, uh, little amendments uh, might take place but the entire law doesn't change uh for example uh, here i would like to uh, state that there are acts which deal with the recruitment and selection uh for example the child labor prohibition and regulation act 1986 now this law it prohibits the employment of children in certain employments and seeks to regulate their working conditions in certain other employments uh second is the employment exchange or the compulsory notification of vacancies act 1959 it mandates that employers that is the industrial establishment which has 25 workers each or above so these organizations or uh, uh, these employments they must notify the vacant positions to the employment exchanges so this is the labor law so uh, depending on these laws the recruitments uh, of that particular area will depend Uh, the next is the legal considerations uh, that the organization has to take care of and these considerations are passed by the government again and it will have a positive or a negative impact on the recruitment policies of the organization uh, for example in india you know that there are job reservations for different castes such as the scheduled castes the scheduled tribes the other backward classes or the obcs Uh, so these are some best examples of uh, legal considerations uh, that the organization has to take care of while they are recruiting uh, their people uh, the next external force is the competitors so when organizations in the same industry they are competing for the best qualified resources there is a need to analyze the competition and offer the candidates best packages in terms of the industry standard so when the uh, competition is severe uh, there are number of uh, organizations in within the same industry so it is beneficial for the employees uh, because uh, due to com competition every organization will want to hire the best people so they uh, will obviously uh, you know uh give good packages good salary uh, benefits to the employees but if there is no competition so it is a monopoly uh, position or monopoly situation for one organization because every other um, uh, individual or uh, people they will come to that particular organization only so uh, they may uh, not give uh, good salaries so competition um 
uh, is a healthy thing uh, and it is a positive aspect uh, uh, from the point of view of the employees if we talk of so the next is um, the image of the organization so a company's image also matters in attracting large number of job seekers and today uh, we all know that companies like google like infosys like microsoft they attract large number of applications and at times and it is basically uh, why because they have a good corporate image and uh, often it is not the money that is important but it is the perception of the job seekers about that particular company uh, that matters uh, in attracting qualified potential employees so image of a company uh, is uh, based on what organization does for employees the environment and the society at large so actions like good public relations rendering uh, public services like building roads public parks hospitals and schools they help in earning a good image or a goodwill for the organization and this goodwill it is um, it is a tool we can say that attracts large number of applicants uh, for applying in the organization so next we come to the internal factors internal to the organization so the first factor is the recruitment policy so we have already learnt what a recruitment policy is so a recruitment policy uh, might uh, state uh, that we are recruiting from internal sources that is from our own employees or from external sources that is from outside the organization so it will definitely affect the recruitment process so we are going to learn about the sources of recruitment also in my subsequent uh, lecture uh, we will discuss about uh, these sources in detail uh the recruitment policy of an organization it specifies the objectives of recruitment and it also provides a framework for implementation of the recruitment programs so generally recruiting through internal sourcing is preferred because the own employees know the organization and they can well fit into the organization's culture and they can save a lot of uh, time and lot of money uh, in um, uh, training also uh then comes another factor the age of the organization now you might be thinking that what does the age of the organization has to do with the recruitment well you, uh, just analyze it that though we say that recruitment is an ongoing and a continuous process because people keep on leaving one organization moving to the other yet the age of the organization also determines its recruitment so a new organization will be recruiting more number than an older or an established organization so say um, i start a new organization a new company today so i will be uh, you know advertising um, maybe 100 uh, posts different uh, posts and i will be requiring 100 people but an older an established organization will not require 100 people uh, at one point of time right they might be uh, hiring five people 10 people or maybe 20 people at a time but not 100 so that is how uh, the age of the organization it determines the number of uh, people they are going to recruit so the next factor is the human resource planning so um, the effective human resource planning it helps in determining and addressing the gaps present in the existing workforce of the organization so if there are gaps between what we have and what we want so then the human resource department will come into action and it will start recruiting but however if we feel that we um, want uh, less people but we already have a uh, adequate number of people then the recruitment will be entirely stopped because additional people means that it is uh, going to cost the organization so you must have this planning uh, an effective planning has to be there so it also helps in determining the number of employees to be recruited and also apart from number uh, the human resource planning also determines that what skill sets we need um, in uh, the coming times so what qualifications what competencies are required 
in the coming times so that is why we say that human resource planning uh, must be done in a very effective manner uh, so that the organization neither has shortage of employees nor they have uh, abundant or um, more than uh, required employees uh, so that is a very uh, we can say important uh, factor uh, of the uh, recruitment process so next is the size of the organization well the size of the organization also affects the uh, recruitment process if the organization is planning to increase its operations and expand its business to handle its operations then obviously they will require large number of people so they will be recruiting on large scale and they might be hiring a uh, large number of people at one point of time but if it is um, a downsizing uh, um, a downsizing operation is there so there will be no recruitment because already you have uh, sufficient people you have adequate people with you and you are maybe planning of laying them off terminating them so in that case recruitment will be uh, stopped so uh, the size of the organization also affects the recruitment next is the cost that is involved so um, we know that recruitment invites huge cost to the organization so therefore um, try to employ that source of recruitment which will bear a lower cost of recruitment for each candidate so you must calculate that uh, what is the cost and the benefit uh, that the cost and benefit analysis has to be done and the organizations must also try uh, to minimize the recruitment cost so whatever sources uh, you are using for recruiting your people uh, that must be analyzed beforehand uh, because uh, some sources might prove to be costlier than the others uh, so um, that has to be analyzed in a very effective manner so organizations uh, they try to employ or they try to outsource the source of recruitment which is cost effective for the organization so what they do is they outsource the entire recruitment process to some third party or some uh, other um, uh, outsourced uh, uh, partners and that uh, outsourced partner will uh, carry out the entire recruitment process so by this uh, the cost is also saved by the parent organization and also the time um, of doing all these uh, mundane jobs is also uh, reduced so the organizations must try and analyze the cost and benefit analysis and also see and try to minimize uh, the cost uh, that is involved in the recruitment process uh, so uh, friends uh, today we learnt about uh, how recruitment can be effective and what benefits uh, the organization can have by having a, a, a good and an effective uh, recruitment process and also we learned that uh, how by having an ineffective recruitment can cost an organization a lot of money effort and time so uh, organizations must try to have an effective recruitment and selection procedures uh, so we also learned about the factors that affect recruitment there are external factors there are internal factors external factors are the ones that are not in uh, control of the organization and uh, the internal factors are the ones that are uh, within the reach of the organization or within the organization so we learned of all these factors that affect Uh, the recruitment procedure or recruitment process so in the next lecture we are going to talk in length about the entire recruitment process so what steps are involved in the recruitment process uh, so uh, that is all for now uh, thank you